Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoyed these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you could purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. This is the DB27 Titan Hawk version 2, the 2018 follow up to the 2012 original. This one trades the radial date for center seconds. 43 millimeters in grade 5 titanium. The watch cradles the wrist and wears easily. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see the 43 wears nice and flat at only 10.9 millimeters in thickness. The watch surprises with its ability to clear a cuff. Now, because of the spring-loaded floating lugs, there are two different dimensions across the wrist, as narrow as 47 millimeters and as broad as 51 millimeters. And you can see that the ergonomic equation is variable. That's right, not one, but two variables in the equation as both of the lugs are spring-loaded and floating to contour to your wrist. A 26 millimeter spacing between the lugs, so it is a proprietary strap size, and it is a proprietary strap. Now, zooming in real close, you can see that it's a high-grade strap, unbolstered. It is black, matte finish, medium rectangular scale alligator leather with a folded edge construction and then small round scale on the underside to ensure that the underside wears just as evenly as the top. Gator on both sides makes for a long wearing strap, sometimes even as long as five years. A simple polished grade five titanium pin buckle to match the grade five titanium case. And you can see that it is both de Batoon branded and handsomely designed to echo the form of the lugs. You can see the early ogival or torpedo cap of the lug ends and not the very first de Batoon DB1 chronograph of 2002. There is a double knurled bullhead crown that is a screw down. It's 30 meters water resistant, but a stiff and reliable 30 thanks to the screw down action. Now you can see that the contours of the floating lugs, internally frosted, externally polished, handsome, angular, and thoughtfully arced to create a curvature when viewed from the side, but principally angular and beveled when viewed from a diagonal. The mid-case features a circumferential striation pattern that you can see that echoes the knurling on the crown, and then you'll appreciate the fact that the bezel is narrow, conical, and highly polished, minimalist. It accents the dial without dominating the fascia of the watch. The watch has impressive dial depth. Outboard, you can see there is a 60 seconds and minutes track. Everything is printed in blue, giving way to an hour track with stylized Roman numerals, including a watchmaker's four. Get a little bit closer and see the details. There is a handsome three-part partition of the center dial and the Titan Hawk shield at center. You'll also appreciate that there is a wonderful microlight gradient striation that runs somewhat interference in pattern across the three partitioned segments of the center dial. So there's a little bit of an interference pattern so that whatever angle you're looking at, the micro light striation does give off a different reflective quality, either brighter or darker. Now the hands at center are lovely, skeletonized, and capped by fired blue ends. The hand at center is fired. It is an extended and lovely lancet style seconds. Center seconds on a de Batoon watch quite rare, and you know this is a DB27 V2 because the earlier version launched in 2012 featured a pointer date at center, so this is the latest version. You can see that three-part partition giving way to the lovely dished outer scales. Turn it all over and you can see that which propels the beast. The movement. This is the Auto V2 automatic winding, a titanium micro light concentric striation aboard the blued center and then the rotor itself a huge hunk of tungsten carbide very dense you could see that the watch is broad open and easy to see almost the way a manual wind movement would be as it essentially keeps no secrets very little is blocked by the winding bridge or the rotor you'll also appreciate the fact that it is a free sprung balance for shock resistance and there are a few refinements in the 60 hour power reserve manufacture movement first you could see the full balance bridge second you could see that the hairspring has a little bit of an off-centered dog leg pattern to it it's a two-part hairspring assembled to create the same concentric beating properties of an overcoil without the vulnerabilities to shock of an overcoil so the watch keeps good time in any position just as if it had a brigade overcoil the balance itself is made of blue titanium and it has white gold masses outboard and this allows it to be both thermally very resistant to timing change due to temperature alteration but it also maximizes the mass on the rim of the balance creating a large polar moment to shake off bump 
or shock-induced timing variation. There is a silicon escape wheel of the company's own design hidden underneath the there, you can see it right next to the anchor hidden underneath the balance, and that is a low maintenance piece designed to minimize wear and service intervals. 60 hour power reserve automatic winding, it beats way at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and it is a handsome, good looking movement with an array of gold, silver, blue, and ruby red tones. Handsome and somewhat industrial in its finish. You can see there's an explosive satin spiral that radiates out across the winding bridge itself with an industrial satin finish across the rotor and appreciate that all of the screw heads, and I'll sh try to show this to advantage, but all of the screw heads across the movement, especially at the rotor center where you can see them well, have been black polished, a timepiece that does it all. This is independent horology at its finest from a company that makes only 150 watches per year.